While you survive in a world of chaos, you wake up from a long dream of dystopian future. You realize it was all just but a dream. You live in a small cabin with your mom and your dad and two siblings, Daniel and Timmy. Timmy. <laughs> there we go. Because today we're going to be playing Dungeons and Dangans. Totally doesn't sound forced at all. <laughs> Really? You're ripping off me? In the first episodes of Dungeons and Stories, somebody commented, it's like, you could have called this Dungeons and Danguns. And I was like, you know, Dungeons and Danguns gave me an idea. Mm -hmm. If you were to play Dungeons and Dragons, you have to follow somewhat of the rules of Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. But if you're to call it Dungeons and Danguns, you don't have to follow any rule. And I can do whatever the fudge I wanted. Okay. So it gave me an idea. What if I take Elias on this magical journey? But it makes absolutely zero sense. Okay, before we start, what kind of world are we talking about? Are we talking about Tolkien world? It's a world of dangers and tank cuts. You base it off something, right? I base it off of myself. And whatever knowledge I have of the fantasy world is going to be applied exactly. I have mixed feelings about this. I have a very particular standard for fantasy. Yeah, that's what we're trying to get you out of. See, you always try to logic your way through. But I just want you to enjoy the adventure. So I'm not going to put any logic into my actual story. <laughs> how could you say that in a single sentence? How could you say no logic and enjoyment in a single <laughs> sentence? This is my therapy to you, brother. You're going to get through this. I don't need help on this part. <laughs> the end of it. I don't need help in this department. You're going to come out as a better man who learns to enjoy the stories instead of trying to beat it. Who learns to laugh at the absurdity of life instead of... <laughs> Listen, this is my way of saying I did not prepare properly and I want to do another Dungeons and Dragons and we're starting now because the longer we do this, the dumber I sound. Let's do this. You didn't realize I'm INTJ, right? I need I need structured architecture. Okay, okay. Structure one. What class do you want to be? I am a reincarnation of some sort of ancient deity oh, or monster. Oh, you mean like those webtoons that are like, I've been reincarnated as a doornail and then they basically become gods. Become, yeah, <laughs> they're super powerful Stem beings. Demigods. Uh, okay, but you don't have any power of a dragon. But the knowledge is is a power. Knowledge is power, Daniel. Well, <laughs> in Dantes and Dragons, it might what? not be. <laughs> <laughs> might not make any sense. Knowledge of dragon might mean you know how to make puddings. Who knows? So you want to go with that? Yeah, let's go. Okay, cool. I'm a dragon reincarnation with a knowledge of puddings. In your past life, you were a dragon that helped civilization build itself. You've given them agriculture, technologies to make their lives simpler. But soon enough, humankind's greed took over. They killed you for sport and you've been reincarnated as a little boy in the distant future. <laughs> you thought you could kill me, you beauty humans? This is my vengeance. As you say, as a little baby, and your parents are like, oh, he's so cute, because you know nobody can understand what you're saying right now. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go through puberty again? No. <laughs> well, no, we're gonna skip all that, because that's always awkward. <laughs> you turn 18 today. Your parents give you a cake. It looks purple, which is not on that Natural color. Happy birthday to you. Are you trying to kill me? <laughs> Have I finally creeped you out enough? Do you finally <laughs> realize what kind of threat I am to civilization and humanity? Is this the direction that you're actually going with right now? Is I this, don't know. Do you eat the cake? No. Roll for it. Uh, my nemesis. Even through reincarnation, you still haunt me. Remnants of Mordor. Are you okay? Did you watch like a dragon movie lately? What's going on? <laughs> All right, here you go. You can press the dice roll, but you can't cheat. As soon as you press it, you have to show it to me as well. Let's see it. No, 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 no. No. Okay. Give that's why I can't let you do it because you cheat. Give me a second. Give it to me. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> you did not get six. You just rolled five times. <laughs> I'm going to roll it again. You get a three. Your mom tries to convince you, you got to eat this cake. It's your 18th birthday. You got a three, so you have to eat the cake. If I eat this and die, I will return and I will find you. <laughs> just eat the cake. I don't know. What do you want from Just me? Just eat man? the cake. Okay, I eat it. <laughs> this is tutorial. I'm trying to teach you how the game works. You gave me a word fantasy and now a cake. You haven't left the house yet. <laughs> eat the cake. <laughs> Once you leave the house, the real game starts. I'm just trying to teach you how the game's going to work. You eat the cake and you die. Surprise. Oh, my only weakness. Sucrose. As you hold your neck and, and 
Why, mother? Your mom and dad cries as you die. Okay, and now that you've died, guess what happens? I reincarnate. You just come back from 30 minutes before. That's what you get, about 30 minutes in fantasy time. Re-zero? But like 30 minutes only. So within 30 minutes, I have to take my revenge on my parents. <laughs> the reason why your parents are so upset you ate the cake is in this world, it's tradition when you turn 18 to poison the cake and try to convince your sons to eat it. And when they deny it, they... <laughs> They become free from the family bondage and go on set off to bigger adventures in life. But if they're so dumb to eat the cake, then, you know, they don't really deserve to see the outside world. That is the dumbest tradition I've ever heard. <laughs> like, there are some severe traditions in, in actual history, but none of them runs on that sort of logic. Well, this world does. And I brought this civilization to them? Well, no, you've been gone a long time. I mean, the dragon's not really part of the story, really. Like, that was just a setup. You told me to choose a race and backstory. I just told you to choose a class and you chose a backstory. Oh, is that what happened? Yeah! <laughs> Son, happy birthday. Eat this cake. Hand me the knife, mother. You should have killed your parents. Hand me the knife. They give you the knife. Okay. Sure. Back off! Back <laughs> off! Go away! Back off! I know what this is. I can smell the poison. Your parents say, oh, we're so proud of you. No, no, no. I, I stabbed them. Roll for it. Uh, you got a five. You succeed in stabbing your mom. No, dad as well. Both of them. Okay, you succeed in stabbing your mom and dad. And overthrowing the world government and killing all humanity. <laughs> that was part of this dice roll. No, no, it was. It was. <laughs> yes, it was. As you stab your mom and dad and you pull the knife out, mm -hmm. you notice that your knife is melted. You look up at your mom and dad and they seem pretty pissed off. And they change their form to a slime-like creature and beat the shit out of you. And you die. I thought I was human. Am I a slime now? No, you're a human. So they're not my parents. Well, they are. <laughs> Do you not know how biology works? <laughs> not biology in this fantasy. <laughs> Animator's gonna be so confused to even understand what's going on. I'm confused in what's going on. <laughs> this is not the direction I thought it was gonna go. I, okay. I was just trying to explain the tutorial, but you made it like this. <laughs> Happy birthday, son. Okay. Here's some cake. All right, they're slimes. Either they're salt water or fresh water. So either I have to put water on them or salt on them. Which would it be? You know, you could just say, I don't want to eat the cake. Like that's never gonna work. Yeah, you're right. You would have to roll for it. Oh, wait. And if I roll lower than three, it goes opposite of what I intended. Yes? Yes. Okay. I happily eat the cake and embrace my parents. I'll just let you do that this time. <laughs> <laughs> Roll the dice! Okay. A six! Why are you kidding me? <laughs> Skynet! You eat the cake and you die. And you hug your parents and your parents are like, Why did you eat the cake? <laughs> I curse you all. Happy birthday, son. Actually, I think you got the date wrong, mom. Oh, I did? Yeah, yeah. It's it, it's like next month. All right. Uh, do a deception roll. You got a four. Oh, really? That's a bit weird. And they just kind of look at each other for a bit confused. Now it's your chance to run if you're going to run. No. <laughs> Okay, if you want to stay in this cabin for the rest of the episode. Fine. Um, I run. Your mom says, wait, wait, wait. Take your brothers with you. Uh, Timmy, stay here or you're going to die. And Daniel, stay here because you're going to get them killed. No, no. You can only leave if you take your little siblings with you. Aww. <laughs> Mom. <laughs> Come on, bro. It'll be fun. We'll, we'll go off an adventure. Let's go. And you set off on a wonderful adventure and you finally understand the rules of this world. Are you ready, Delius? It only took us 22 minutes. I think it's still the video here. I know. I want to at least introduce some of the world. I mean, you introduced enough. Parents of a human child and a tangerine are slimes. It's going to be one of those things again where we edit it, mm -hmm. release the first 10 minutes, uh -huh. see what the comments are like. <laughs> and if it's positive, we'll keep going. Okay. I get a feeling that for this series, it might not be as positive. <laughs> <laughs> And people like logic. No, people like adventure. The interactions of these beings with people. Oh, like, what would I do? Not freaking, I'm going to kill my own parents. He's just 13, bro. Sorry. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, I'm crazy. You say goodbye to your parents and you walk into the town and it's just everything you ever hoped for. Really? 
But this is a medieval world, so it's gonna be smelly as far. It's clean. The spirits of poop and water keep it clean in this world. <laughs> the spirits. The spirits. <laughs> so we've enslaved the spirits. No, it's a perfect harmony and balance between the spirits. Oh, so it's humanity versus monsters. You walk across town, you see people selling apples, oranges, you see people selling swords. Timmy, don't look at it. Don't look at it. <laughs> it's okay. Mages are selling books and enchantments. You see a salesman at Walmart selling some TV. You see Wait, the what? <laughs> Don't worry about it. And as you walk across town, Television? you get hungry and you go into a bar. Hello, my dear barmaids. It's an old man with a mustache. Kind of looks like he's been through some stuff. Hi, do you need a fresh hen to help you with your business? I've got two slaves right here. <laughs> <laughs> You can roll for that. <laughs> a two. The barkeep says, no, no. We uh, we stopped taking slaves ever since the incident. And a little growl comes out of his neck. Says, ah, anyway, what would you like? Job. For yourself? I would like a good job. Sure, you get one silver coin a day. A coin worth of silver per day worth. You don't know how much a silver gets you. Okay. So you work at the barkeep and you start to learn about what the world is all about. How to mix cocktails and make and pour beers. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to go off on an adventure. Are you going to stay as a barkeep? You know those like isekai restaurant animes? No. No? No. You never saw one? Sure, we'll, we'll try it. The barkeep says, okay, why don't you start out as a dishwasher? How about you hand me the knife, I show you what I can make. And then we decide. The barkeep gives you the knife. He's like, all right, fine. See what you can do. What are you making? I'm making pasta. I'm making my mafia pasta. What do you need? Uh, a lot of tomato soup, crap ton of garlic, some meat, half a carrot, a few stems of basil. Great. You go get those ingredients. You mean you have nothing in your fridge right now? I'm just not going to waste my ingredients on you. I pull out my knife. How about now? The barkeep just laughs. <laughs> Silly little boy. You know, I just need meat, right? I, I'm not picky about meat. I can take your arm if you want. Okay, sure. Let's say you got a six. Mm. As you stab the barkeep, the knife just stops at his stomach. It does not go in. Even with the roll of six, you try to do a critical damage of zero. The barkeep's eyes just glare down at you very slowly. What are you looking at? <laughs> Dude, I am an inexperienced 18-year-old kid. I'm not afraid of anything. He growls again. Mm. But then you can tell that it's not coming out of his mouth, but from his back. And steam starts to I come. knew it! Everyone, I called it! He's a monster! And before you even know what's going on, you're dead. Uh, roll, roll. Doesn't matter. You're gonna die no matter roll. what this is. What? <laughs> yeah, what's the point of a roll then? In the case of a barkeep who's absolutely necessary, he is plot invincible. You keep adding stuff and adding new rules. That's not fair, man. Same with, you know, stabbing your parents. You, you couldn't kill them even if you rolled a six. You, you can succeed in trying to stab them, but they wouldn't die. Oh, so my mistake was that I dice roll for the attempt to stab them, not attempt to kill them. No, no, that's not, <laughs> that's not the lesson you should take away here. <laughs> Your head rolls off on the ground, you're dead. 30 minutes backwards. Pasta, eh? Hmm. You can go get the ingredients yourself. No, you're gonna give me the ingredients or I'm gonna tell everyone that you make strange noises with your throat and there's stuff coming out of your back. Sure. I didn't kill him, I simply blackmailed him. You got a four. Okay. I believe you're blackmail. You can go tell them if you want. And he kind of chuckles. I find <laughs> the most fanatical looking religious group I can find in the whole town. Okay. And I tell them there is a monster among us. You go to a priesthood. Okay. They're like just kind of walking in a line. The I have to make up a religion. Uh, <laughs> the just <laughs> goddess of uh, of of whiskey. This is what we worship. <laughs> you go up to one of them and say, you know that barkeep? I saw strange noise coming out of his belly and a strange smoke from his back. So, said the priest. <laughs> he is a sacrilegious being against the great goddess Whiskey. You got a one. They don't believe you. Just follow the plot. <laughs> what plot? You gave no plot. I told you, go get the ingredients yourself. How? <laughs> I have no money. I have no connection, no reputation, no understanding of the economy. Sounds like you're gonna have to do some quests and find more about this world. Wow. It's almost like it's an actual D&D. Fine. I go to the library and figure out, try to get some more information. Great choice. You head to the library to learn more knowledge and the logic of this realm. What do you look up? Do you look up where you can get basil? What meat you can get that tastes like sausage? History of barkeep. You gotta let that go. You gotta let that go. When I find a problem, I will solve it. Okay, you get a two. You, you can't seem to find any knowledge about the barkeep. Uh, sorry, librarian, is there any secret compartments or any forbidden sections of this library? The librarian doesn't understand your what you're saying because he's a giant ant man. That's just a normal person. Giant ant. Man. He's just a giant ant. He says giant ant. Man. It's a giant ant. So ant man who's a giant. You realize I can take back what I say, right? It's not a permanent thing. I don't think that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> 
He's a giant ant. He got hired as a librarian because he has a lot of hands. Then I wait. I stay hidden in somewhere in the library and wait for the lights to go down. The ant will go somewhere. You got a three. The ant finds you and says, Oh, you mean to go in there? In there? Is that the part where you mean to go with? Okay, thank you very much. I, I don't understand what you're you saying. You get a general feeling that the librarian ant wants you to leave. And I ignore that feeling. <laughs> I'm just going to explore the, that dark, deep dungeons of library where all the secret and hidden books are probably stalked. Thank you. <laughs> ah, thank you, thank you. Wish me luck. Which probably translates to you little shit. <laughs> <laughs> sure, you ignore the librarian ant's warning. I couldn't understand it. The ant man does not speak language. The ant holds up a sign. <laughs> <laughs> it says leave on the sign. <laughs> So what do you do? I go into the dungeon. Okay. I mean, either, either I need I get some information or I can die. You enter what seems like clearly, clearly off limits of the library where magic casters above level 20 can go in and learn about forbidden spells, but don't actually use it. Histories that were banned from the rest of the world. Pasta recipes that you've never learned about before. Oh, I got to look at this one. There you go. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to end up being a chef. In this it sounds drug. like that's the direction that we're going. <laughs> I'm going to go with it. You, you open up one of the recipes. The recipe seemed too complicated, but the taste of it improves with every page you turn. What page do you go to? Last page. The last Second page. Second last page. <laughs> <laughs> I got two. You gotta let me narrate the scene. You can't just switch up your answer. But I, I stab him. It doesn't work. I uh, I slash him. Okay, what's gonna happen? I turn into a wrong page. I, I couldn't turn into the page. There's nothing that can possibly happen. Well, let me think about it. <laughs> you turn to the last page and it's ripped. It's gone. The right. second last page is ripped too. And the rest of the and the and the book works. <laughs> The book burns <laughs> up. <laughs> and before you turn to any other page, the ant grabs you by the neck and throws you out of the library. I resist. You fail at resistance because you rolled a three and you get kicked out of the library. Daniel, who's who finally finds you, says, You left us! <laughs> What choice did I have? Timmy was gonna die and you were gonna kill me. Anyway, why don't you actually try to make your mafia pasta recipe? I know the recipe, but they're not giving me the ingredients. So why don't you, like a normal D&D adventurer, get the ingredients? Maybe there's some plot hidden. I will not be enslaved by a plot. I'm trying to work with what you have. <laughs> I mean, I'm not really looking for any any route, actually. I'm just trying to cause as much chaos and, and pain for you. And you hear a trumpet sound a really shitty trumpet sound okay. but you hear it from a distance you see a group of white knights marching towards the town and a man walks in front of them and says hear ye hear ye whoever makes the best pasta will get to have the hand of the princess and then they walk out daniel looks at elias and says <gasps> Did you hear that? Oh, I'm not, I'm not doing this shit. Let's go. <laughs> Relationship? Yeah. Come on. As you walk away, you notice a narrow corner street that you haven't noticed before. And I will walk right past uh, it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a hand that looks like a grandma's hand reaches out and waves very gently and has a cackling sound. Oh, that's, that's sweet little oh, boy. Oh, that is creepy as fuck. Kids, let's go. Daniel says, but I really think we should help the old lady. Lady, do you need help? Yes! Okay, get the knights, guys. Get the knights. Knights! There's an old lady here who needs some help. Work for your bloody taxes for once. When you look back, the corner street is all gone. Wow, Timmy says. What a mysterious adventure that we missed out on. <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty shitty for an adventure, Elias. <laughs> Says Timmy. <laughs> you asshole. <laughs> Said Timmy. <laughs> you go to the street where they sell all the ingredients. Okay. Oh, hey, I need some uh, parsley, tomato sauce, a uh, few pounds of meat and salami, and a crap ton of garlic. How much do you want? Ooh, I have some tomatoes. Do you have one silver coin? Okay, I can give you a talking tangerine. Timmy says, really? We have a talk? <laughs> <laughs> you mother fudger. <laughs> We're not selling our brother for tomato. We have a silver coin because we actually worked <laughs> the entire day. <laughs> Timmy, give him your silver coin for some tomato sauce. How much are you willing to pay for a talking green apple? <laughs> 
slavery <laughs> is strictly forbidden in this town. You can't sell us off. Mom will kill you. She tried to kill me. I don't care. Let's just love in this world. Well, then this is love too. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> <laughs> This is why we can't do longer series. It doesn't work. We get nowhere unless I force the plot, which you can't do in a DD. If it's a candy survive, I can just move along with the movie plot no matter what happens. But a DD is an open world. I mean, this is probably gonna be episode two, and people are like, why are we wasting our time in this series when it's going nowhere? And then it's gonna end, and we're gonna start episode three, and guess what's gonna happen? Absolutely nothing! You're welcome. You get the tomato sauce, mm -hmm. and now you look for another ingredient. Uh, I need garlic. Great. An old lady seems like she's selling garlic. Lady, how much are for the garlics? Oh, sweet young boy. Okay, garlic for a sweet young boy. Okay, <laughs> Timmy. I don't need money for oh, garlic. Oh, thank you. That's a great deal. <laughs> Let her finish her sentence. <laughs> All I need is for you to go to the mountains behind the town and get some garlics for me as well, and you can keep some. Lady, if I get the garlics from the mountains, why would I bring it back here? Oh, I'll give you five bronze coins. Hmm, no, I'll pass. I'll look for a different merch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you're a boy, like a young boy with that much power and weapon and go to the mountains alone, that's a death wish. You have us, your siblings. That's a negative factor, <laughs> no, not a positive factor. We're gonna get some uh, basil. You notice that nobody's really selling basil. You ask one of the town folks what's going on. Yeah, I'm looking for basil and garlic. Why are we still short on every vegetable? Well, you see, we used to have plenty of basil, but what happened was the creatures that grow basil behind their backs started to deplenish and it's hard to find those creatures now. And none of you thought to domesticate it. None of you. You can find some in the field of Yorn two miles away from this town. In this world, basil doesn't grow on the ground. It grows on the back of some creatures. Seriously? Well, I happen to have some basil if you're willing to do a Trade little... lovely. Oh, okay. Timmy! <laughs> A little quest for me. I'll give you five silver coins and... Basil. Basil. And garlic. Just basil. Okay. My kids always hang out in this abandoned house. They call it a haunted house. I'm pretty sure it's not. Can you just make sure go check that they're safe to do so in that place? It's an abandoned building. No, it's not safe. I mean, there's nobody there. Although Hence they the do say... the reason why it's not safe. Buildings need maintenance. Yeah, they do say at the strike of midnight, they hear a little girl sing in the house, but nobody ever ever sees any little girl in there. Do you accept the quest? Yeah, I basically turn around the corner, wait there for a second, and come back. They're all safe. <laughs> He's not gonna confirm. <laughs> all right, okay, you can roll for that. <laughs> Are you kidding me? You got me? a one. Are you kidding me? Not only does the owner not believe you, but he realized that you're lying. You lied to me, you little brat. You no longer can accept that man's quest anymore. You have to find another way to get par parsley. Yeah, parsley. Yeah, sure. <laughs> no, what was it? What was the thing? <laughs> okay, now I go no. for a merchant who sells basil. Basil. Okay, sorry. No, you can get basil other ways, but you no longer can accept the quest from that man. You say he has a child, right? <laughs> Yes. Let's go find the child. Are you sure you want to do this? <laughs> Every time you do this, people end up being level 999. Like they're 999 and they're stuck in this crummy town. They don't even domesticate basil growing creatures. Maybe you could start that business. That is a great idea. Bro, I start domestication business where I basically keep every animal that grows vegetation. You can't roll. That'd be like saying roll. I can beat the game. <laughs> you got to do like step by step and I'll <laughs> I'll tell you when you need to roll for something. How should I know? <laughs> I never actually did D&D before. And just because you get a six doesn't mean it always works. If, you, if it's so absurd, I can still say no. But you get something else out of it, maybe. All right, all right, fine. What are you doing? You're going to pursue the kid or you're going you're gonna to start a domestication place or what? Okay, I, mean, I know the kid now, so we can always come back to that. Uh, I go out there, search for the creatures. And on my way, I also check the mountain. <sighs> Finally, finally. So you go up the mountain to get some basil with no armor, no weapons, no protection. With your two little brothers. Then I change my mind. I go to blacksmith. Okay. Uh, can I borrow some armor and weapon? Uh, no, but you can have this really, really short dagger for one silver. How about I trade you my brothers for a weapon? And <laughs> okay, bro, I have a silver too. I also work the entire day. <laughs> Stop trying to sell us. <laughs> blacksmith says, all right, one silver for this short sword. Here you go. But if you accept my quest, Quest. I can give you a bit of a bigger sword. Which is? Go up the mountains. There are three goblins that have killed my little sibling. Mm -hmm. I want you to avenge him. Actually, I'm not going to go there. There's a goblin in the mountains. I'm not going up there. <laughs> 
<laughs> I was trying to make your life easier. So you can do two quests at once. There's a goblin up there? I'm a, I'm a kid without, with zero training. No weapon, no shield, a short sword. No, no, if you accept this quest, I'm gonna give you a bigger sword. Okay, fine. Blacksmith says, all right, here is the long sword. Okay, I like to sell this long sword and buy some armor. <laughs> Why don't you give one of us the short sword that you have? Timmy, hold on to the short sword. What about me, bro? I'm the older brother of yeah, the two. Yeah, but he dies and you kill. So I think this is a nice balance. Thanks, Elias. <laughs> Timmy holds it and just starts swinging recklessly. Okay, give me the sword back. <laughs> Aw. Daniel, grab that branch and follow me. <laughs> This branch right here? Yeah. Okay. As Daniel snaps the branch off, uh -huh. the tree starts saying, mm -hmm. you, you feel a tremor from the ground as the tree pulls its roots out like a leg. You're an ant? This mountain has ant and there's some has goblins inside? The goblins should have been dead long, long time ago. Ants are one of the most powerful creatures in Middle Earth. This ant isn't in the mountains. I thought you pulled it out in the town. I mean, it's still quite near. The ants have a wide territory. Not this ant. And he's not called an ant. He's called a tree man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, we're going to capture him first then. Mm, why'd you break off one of my fingers? Yeah, why'd you do that, Daniel? <laughs> <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> I'm going to roll for Daniel. He gets a four. Okay. And it says, Oh, wise tree man, I only seek your divine power, your magical magicness. I want to learn from the power to wield spirits and use magic. So maybe I thought I could take this little branch to have a tiny bit of your... Are you trying to go like like Harry Potter wand route? Yeah. The tree man says, hmm, <laughs> I guess you can do that. Uh... But only if you prove yourself to be worthy. Okay, Daniel, good luck. I'm going to take Timmy and get the freaking goblins. You must kill three goblins up on that mountain and return to me with their heads. Okay. And he goes back to being a normal tree. Daniel, take another branch. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'm going to be a wizard. Last time I gave you magic power in different multiverse, you burned Timmy several times. It's not going to work. Daniel wives at Timmy. Nothing happens yet. See? I'll try that every five minutes until something happens. <laughs> Notice how he's used the word yet. There's a plot going on here, people. Come on, we gotta we gotta prove ourselves worthy. Let's let's go. Let's go and do this. I climb up the mountain and look for traps. Oh. Wow, okay, you got a six. You look for traps and you start to see an area called Grandma's Farm Area. And you notice a picket with a sign that says garlic. And while you're looking for the traps, since you rolled a six, you see a track that seems like a goblin track heading deeper into the woods. It was a good time to get six. Okay, I, I sent Timmy in front of me. <laughs> Do you give him a short sword? I give him all the swords. He can't carry it. Okay, I give Timmy a short sword and, uh -huh. and send Daniel and Timmy in front of me. In front of you? Yeah. Daniel, say Lumos. Here, I'll let you do it if you roll like a five or higher. Okay. Five, baby! <laughs> All right, Lumos works. A little light. <laughs> now, cast that. Throw that light over there. Yeet! Daniel throws the wand. <laughs> okay, that works. Do, do we see anything? You spot three goblins lurking behind some bushes. They look at you, draw their swords, and prepare for a battle. They have weapons? <laughs> that wasn't part of the deal. They have weapons? <laughs> As you ready yourself, you notice something particular about their behavior. They hesitate and murmur to each other rather than just attacking you straight on. Okay, um, Timmy, do you want to go say hello? <laughs> you want to roll for that? Oh, God, no. You got a four. Okay, Timmy says, okay, I got this. As he walked towards them, one of the goblins speaks in a very pitiful tone. Please, we don't want to fight. We're just here to survive. We have families to feed. Apart from your family, you kind of sound like Dobby that I... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like everybody in this entire universe just sounds exactly the same for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the vocal range of this species is not that wide. Yeah, probably. That's 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 why. All right, what do you do? Well, the general rule of thumb is that you don't trust a goblin. But then again, they are offering peace. So I immediately turn back and watch my six. Did we miss any totems? <laughs> That's a good one. No, you don't notice anything. And they just continue to beg for mercy. We didn't want to attack you, but we thought you were a threat to our families. You're a threat to my pasta. What do you want? Pasta? Oh, I see. Pasta must mean some great relic that you're to conjure and you must kill one of the goblins to, to make the sacrifice. I see. It was for a greater cause. Please take my life. Spare these two. Okay, that is very honorable. 
Fine, I take the offer. I take the volunteering goblin in front of me and attempt to strike. Elias, goblins are notorious for their deceit and treachery. Are you gonna trust them? Shut up. We could have killed one and had a 3v2 situation. <laughs> you, weren't even, you, weren't, you weren't even trying to save them. <laughs> You're so much worse than I could have possibly imagined. They fail to sway you and you know that their true intentions are evil. <laughs> I just gave such a such worse answer and replied. Calling them evil really doesn't ring true to me right now. Timmy stabs one of the goblins. Oh, tell my newborn son that I love him. Will do. Where are they? <laughs> uh, well, I say to the goblins, your brother was very honorable and I will honor him back. You may leave and never come back. They say, thank you, master. Oh, thank you for sparing our lives. Please take his body as a sacrifice for your pasta. Goodbye. And they just start to scurry off. Yeah, I am putting that in my pasta. Bro, we start to kill two more goblins. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so shred the body and we'll tell them it's three. It's big enough, I suppose. It's not like they're going to do a jigsaw puzzle with the dead body of a goblin and try to count them, right? Okay, I, I think we've been doing this uh, session long enough. Uh, Yo, Timmy, bring the knife here. Will Elias be able to convince the villagers that he killed three instead of one? Will this have ramifying consequences that we don't really know about? Were those two goblins really that nice? Or were they and did Elias just decide to be the most horrifying man I've ever seen in my life? <laughs> did Daniel make a mistake by preventing death from happening? Therefore, this video can really never have an ending yeah that was a very bad choice <laughs> we'll, we'll find out next time probably in 2024 do not mark your calendars don't i think this might have been the worst session of tnd what do you mean we finally got a battle at the end but we just... and i killed one with honor and glory you made your kid brother do it <laughs> so it's, it's all good do not see his face traumatized hey do i need to remind you in different multiverse you would have already been dead you're alive you're welcome uh, thank you so much for watching everyone um and let's go make some pasta yeah i think we might go back to just doing can you survive movie videos what do you mean? I, I <laughs> bye